Oh, let's review it, guys. Time, of course, for Tanner to go fire breeding. Uh, I felt that I was pretty, I was pretty spot on on the stuff in the rest part of his it. Yeah, I guess I corrected him, man. Nesco was gonna like, you know, use the blood to kind of get the firepower going, right? Uh, I guess the demon's gonna be okay. That he actually was gonna be alive because Tanner missed the fourth guy and so on, right? Uh, so let's start with that. I will talk about it first actually. Genya, right? Genya is probably possessed, right? And I keep thinking about it too because the other three. Han Tengu, they're based on the on the typical Tengu, right? So that one is a Tengu, this guy, straight up Tengu, right? Wing guy, like a harpy Japanese yokai, right? Uh, the other two have Tengu abilities. For example, as I mentioned in Mariachi part, Neo, you can face Tengu enemies and they can throw like wind feathers at you and they can shoot lightning and so on, right? So it's a very classic Japanese mythology that you have like the Tengu that can control wind and lightning, right? So those three guys are kind of like, okay, they're kind of like Tengu, right? You know? So the blue guy, and I'm Amy Oliver, but I guess it was. But the blue guy I feel is something else, right? So he maybe is the old man or whatever, right? So he probably has a kind of body, I suppose, then, taking over bodies or whatever. Yeah, I mean, because the whole thing that he's like an old man that's crying and so on, and then becomes this four guy, you know, what's up with that, right? Um, so, I, so I'm guessing the blue guy has some kind of body modification abilities. He can take over bodies, he can possess people or whatever. Uh, that doesn't feel very Tengu like, but I guess that's kind of his thing. It's like the, the fourth, the outsider of the Tengu thing, a little bit. They have this, I don't know, the world or so on. But still, yeah, I guess he's, I guess he's like body or something. It reminds me of um, a little bit of Clover as well, but oh, thinking of uh, again, I guess it's a Naruto. Yeah, you know what? The kind of Naruto, right? I mentioned that earlier too that. These guys are similar to Naruto, they have the two brothers, you know, the Uko and Osaka on, and they also could, of course, send in one of the brothers into uh, the, the enemy, right, you know, I want to spoil Naruto too much, here, but I assume people see Naruto by now, right, classic old anime, and these two twin guys, they also could split, they also could jump into the enemy's body, right, one of them could, like, jump into your body and, like, poison you or whatever, right, so that was the thing when they were fighting them, right, so, it does remind me a lot of Uko and Osaka on, I guess, again, the most, right, which I already said in two weeks ago, I think. Uh, but anyway, so Genya is probably possessed now, so he might die then. But then Genya also has weird healing power, so it also could be that Genya is just a demon. But I don't think so, no. I think the blue guy just jumped into Genya, that doesn't make sense really. Uh, Genya is also a weird guy himself, because he's alive and all this stuff, but I think the blue guy just took his body, yeah, this just makes more sense, right? Or that's what happened really. So anyway, that's kind of like, uh, <laughs> that stuff, okay. Now let's talk about Mitsuri. She finally comes, the ultimate wife of Mitsuri. But my favorite one, Kanashan! I need, I don't have like a, I don't have like a whip katana. <laughs> I need to get one of those. We cannot buy a whip katana. She's finally here. I have the anime is like, let's start with her. <laughs> the anime know what they're doing. They don't keep saying. They're like, look at the rest. Yeah. Look at this. The ultimate wife is finally here. It's beautiful. This is breathtaking. Mitsuri needs more screen time. She should be the main character. That, I guess she's like a comic relief character too. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> First of all, come on. The anime knew what they were doing, it's true. <laughs> in this scene, I can't, sorry. But in the reaction, I was like, look at her ass. <laughs> and nobody was just like, it was very anime. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it was very anime, right? When she appeared after she landed here on the um, hilltop, I guess, right? The camera is straight up her ass, right? <laughs> it's like, it's anime. And then when the old man, the, the master sort of the video, when he falls down, sees her running, right? And the camera goes in the rope eyes. <laughs> yeah, the camera is like here. <laughs> you get that running with the rope eyes. I'm like, yep. Mitsuru is definitely the most, um, um, to be fair, right? The most sexualized character in the show. I mean, I'm not against that. I think she's the most attractive character. I, I, she's been my favorite female character from the beginning, right? Uh, for season one, absolutely. And, you know, as I keep saying, right, I really love her voice actor. You know, kinda, you know, I love her voice actor, right? It really is one of my all time favorite voice actors. I made this um, top 10 CU uh, a few months ago, right? Like my favorite, uh, you know, voice actors. And then, of course, her voice actor, Kana Hanasawa, was part of that list, right? High up there. I don't wanna spoil it, but, you know, she got interested. Talk about some older, you know, one of my favorite older voice actors, but yeah, she's so she's definitely in my like, I, I, she's in my top five. I, I will leave it at that, but she's, she's, she's basically the winner, yeah. <laughs> she's not the winner, okay, she's not the winner, but she's very, very close to being my favorite voice actor. Uh, but anyway, so of course, it also helps, right? You, you, I can't deny that you, for example, when I have Aqua, right, you know, Ami Surimiya, uh, when she's voicing another character, right, another anime. 
Of course, I'm probably going to like that character more, right? Because it's voiced by another one of my favorite voice actors. Uh, for example, another one I really like is uh, Aki that plays uh, Union, right? In Megumin. Also, of course, Rei Takahashi that plays Union. But, uh, sorry, <laughs> Megumin, I mean, <laughs> not Union. But, I mean, the voice doing Union, her best job, in my opinion, is Restarter, right? In Cautious Hero. So, when she's voicing Restarter, that's, that's when I really fell in love with her voice. She's created at Union too, but, but her best role, I think, of all anime scene is Restarter. Uh, but because I really love her work as Restarter, now of course I even more so love Union, right? That's a really weird to say. I hope you what I mean. Basically, I love Mystery, and I have to say that her voice actor being Kanna also really helps, though, because yeah, she's like my all time one of my all time favorite actors, definitely. So massive help there. And yeah, but what can I say? She does like, a really good job in the episode, of course, voicing these scenes. She got that really interesting, you know, like kind of. So it's funny and genki, right? And wholesome, yeah. When like when like she saves the old man, and then the older person over there is like, "Ah, oh, need help! I'm coming! Uh, sorry, that's not even." Like she has to kind of weird, you know, because she's really good at voicing these kind of like, I don't, I don't call it, but kind of like you know, wholesome airhead characters, right? Like kind of, I'm not saying you know, kind of like you know, oh, I'll help you, kind of the cheerleader, kind of you know, I'm coming for you. <laughs> she kind of has the thing, right? But I think it works so perfectly, right? Because she had got this like you know, her love. You know, her love blade, right? You know, it's all hot on it, and she's all super hot and attractive. And she's killing all the demons left and right, and there's like body parts flying everywhere. And then when it has her help, she's like, ah, that's a bird, that's a bird. <laughs> you know, she comes stuck. She becomes like a little, <laughs> she becomes super cute again. I think it, I think it made the contrast of her like being this badass demon slayer. And, and then the next scene, she's all like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm here, guys. <laughs> you know, I think it works really well. I mean, maybe it's only me, but I think it works really well. She's like a really perfect voice casting for her, honestly. I, th I think so. I think genuinely. I mean, it, it can be hard right, to imagine someone else voicing a character if you've heard a few episodes. But uh, yeah, I, th I think Kana is like freaking. It's like the perfect woman to voice mystery, honestly. It's like the perfect voice casting. Um, for example, right? Uh, I like Yamato, right? In One Piece. There's no, <laughs> there's no lie. I like Renji too, for that matter, yeah. I like Yamato, right? But I don't. Even though Saura Hayami is also one of my all top voice actors. I don't think that I actually feel that Saura Hayami, again, is the perfect casting for Yamato. Even though she's like one of my all-time favorite voice actors, really is. Of course, also in Demon Slayer, right? Saura Hayami, she's playing, she's, you know, uh, Shinobu, right? Uh, I, I, I never really felt that she actually was the perfect Yamato. In my opinion, the perfect Yamato, it would be Yo Kobayashi, which is this famous, like, uh, tomboy voice, right? She does, like, masculine tomboys. Yeah, she does, like, uh, Lala Gonzalez and so on. She does Sasha in uh, Tango Titan, right? I think she would have been a better... I think she I think she would have been the perfect casting for Yamato, having that kind of male-female voice that she can easily swap between, because she probably would have, like, a much more masculine take on Yamato. I think it would be more fitting. Uh, for example, right? That's an example in my head. But I think Kana is the perfect mystery. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Weird review. I'm like, you know what? I really love Kana. <laughs> this, this is more about... But come on, what can I say? When I watch the episode, I keep thinking about what a great job um, Kana is doing, you know, as the voice actor, in my opinion, of course. But uh, but anyway, yeah, this scene was great. Uh, lastly, I guess I can say that her weapon always reminds me of... I said, always reminds me of Ivy, right, you know? So Calibur. I'm an old fighting game player, right? Play every fighting game. But a lot of so caliber in my days, and yeah, her voice actor is very much. Uh, oh, sorry, what was that? <laughs> her weapon reminds me a lot of Ivy, right? This kind of like magical whip sword thing. I really wonder how that works. Are you gonna explain how they build her weapon? <laughs> yeah, she got like a magical katana. She's like the only one that has a. Her weapon really stands out, I would say, in the whole anime. From the good guys. I mean, the bad guys got a bunch of weird stuff, right? But she's definitely the most unique weapon of the good guys. Like, uh, Ten, he used, like, a nunchuck and so on. Yeah, which is, like, you know, whatever. The, but she has, like, a weird freaking medical whip sword thing, which is very, very unique. So they might explain it later. Um, but it seemed to be... I, I think she's going to come in and fight the Tengu as well, right? After she now saved them from the fishes. Because, yeah, because it feels like, you know, the older Hashira is fighting the Urn guy, and that feels pretty, like, one-on-one, -on -one maybe. I feel like she's gonna run over Tanya and Esco. And then lastly, yeah, the urn guy. I'm thinking, I said the export, I'm thinking that he's gonna die if you saw the urns, right? He has to, he can teleport through his urns, but he's like a genie and he needs, I believe, the urn to be alive or something. It feels like, I mean, he's like a fish thing or so on. It feels like he, it's like the urn or his water or whatever, you know what I mean? It feels like he needs to have an urn to be inside of. So maybe if you destroy the urn, he just dies. 
or something like that. And he, he might be really weak. I guess that I feel that he has like he has to have like an urn to have a body into, uh, or maybe if you saw on the urns, he won't die. But then it's like a fish out of water and just kind of you know uh, just kind of squatted on the ground, or whatever. That's how it feels to me. So I think you just aim it on the urn instead of fighting his body. And then he probably dies from like <laughs> dehydration or something. Uh, there we go. We just grab, slap at it, and have a great day.